Now I'm gonna let this know revealing God, I'm your host, Mary Victor. Today we're we'll talking about our series, or continue our series titled The Love Series. Now we we've introduced love as the most important commandment God has given Christians. We know that from Matthew 22, verse 37 to 40, it says that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul and our strength, and with all our mind. And to love your neighbor as yourself is the second greatest commandment. So the two most important commandments which fulfill all, all of God's law is the love commandment. But it's not being well preached in the body of Christ because many are not, you know, they're, they're not being taught properly about love. And there are not many examples of love because love is the bond of perfection. It's what really proves that we have reached maturity in Christianity because we are, you know, when you get born again, you have the spirit of love. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sadness. So you have a spirit of love. That love needs, is a seed in you and it has to come out. When it comes out, it shows in love. It is character of love. Love is grace. The Bible out of faith, um, hope, and love. Love is the greatest in First Corinthians chapter 13. So that is one reason why many people have not, you know, come to maturity in Christ. But I believe Christ wants many Christians to grow in love because the end is very close and Christians don't know how important love is. Love is important in this world and the world to come. Faith will come and will end up when it's fulfilled. Anything that faith, when faith is fulfilled, it is over. When prophecies are fulfilled, it's over. But when hope is fulfilled, it's over. But love exists forever. Because it is the nature of God. The Bible says first John chapter four, verse eight, God is love. So we must realize love is so important and it's a character that can only keep us together. Because why Satan, you know, rebel against God because he, he was a character he was had a nature or he had a character of pride in him, which caused him to become, you know, what he is today, fighting and resisting all what God is, even though he was created, you know, to be, you know, beautiful creature, wonderful creature, but he ended up being that evil because pride was in him. So love does not have pride. We've gone through the characteristics of love. And, you know, we also said that in Judgment 13, when Jesus was speaking, that by this shall all men know you are my disciples who love one another. So love is what the world is even looking for in the Christian world. The world actually needs love. The fighting, the bitterness, the hatred, the backbiting, everything that happens in this world is a lack of love. And that's why it is the most compa- um, important commandment in the scriptures. We, we Christians should not be looking at all those other trivial commandments without looking at this because the Bible also says in First Timothy chapter one verse five on this uh, that by this uh, by the end of all of God's commandment it ends up in charge out of um, if good art out of um, faith offended and a good conscience. So we have to understand that faith, you know, uh, all works of faith must end up in love if it must not fall if if not if we don't want it to fall into error. So that one must, must know. Love balances out. Love causes us as Christians to be able to truly live the Christian race as God wants it and not to fall into error. So many people have fallen into error because of a lack of love. So everyone do must filter it through love as Christians. No, but now, I want to talk about testing love because we must realize that in, in the journey of life, Everything is tested before promotion, even in the physical. Before you get into, you know, a new job, probably give you a test interview, or if you're going to be going from one level in school to another, you go through a test to know if you're going to move on or not. In the spirit realm, there are tests that have been done to ensure you are able to handle the next level. And many Christians have failed or continue to fail certain tests, and that's why it seems they're not growing, they remain the same. So look at what the Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 2. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. That the testing of your faith worketh patience. So, but now I want us to look at verse 12. It says, Blessed is the man that endured temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. So, when a man is saying that when there's a certain test for love and a certain test for faith, which is that verse 2 says, The trial of faith. But in this one, he says, When you are tempted, you are tried then 
it proves your love if you don't fall for that temptation. So that was why I say so. And the Bible says, "Count all joy, because it work a patient and it brings promotion." We can see through our scripture different tests that people went through and how some got promoted, some got demoted because they did not pass the test. Now, you, people might say, why did Adam, you know, why did God allow Adam go through, the, you know, he, he knew what he said would come and everything, and why did he allow him to go through that temptation? Now, we know that in the Bible's case, Adam was not deceived, but he was deceived. So uh, Eve's test was the test of her faith. She didn't believe in what God said. So she failed the test. Adam she believed, God the Bible says, makes us know in first Timothy chapter 2 that Adam was not deceived. His own test was a test of love because he shows his wife over what God has said. Go ahead. Why am I causing the test of love? Because your love for God will be tested every time. And now my Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse, I think verse 12, that it says that either endure it and shall be saved because, because, love, because iniquity, iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall be was cold. So in other words, in the end time, there will be a lot of tests for, and the test will be actually if you love God. It's not only a test of faith, it's only a test of love in these end times. That's what you must know. Then, but I want to show this relationship between the test God allows, you know, um, the test of God and the test that you know comes from Satan. Some test God, you know, is instituted by God. Is actually God that you know gives you that test. But there are some tests that actually comes from Satan or from the enemy, and God allows it because He wants to see how you will react. God expects to react as properly. Because God will not allow a test that is greater than you. We know that from First Corinthians chapter ten verse thirteen. He said, "God will not. There, there is no um, temptation that is common to man. There's temptation. Is, everybody is being tempted, but God will not allow a temptation you cannot handle." That was saying. So we have to understand anything temptation that comes your way. That if you are not the one that went to look for the temptation, because if you look at also James chapter verse thirteen says. Let no man say that he is tempted. I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So, in other words, God allows some tests. But when you are, you know, you have lost in you, you have certain things in with you, that is what you know, when Satan comes against those things, God knows that that's your area of weakness, and you got drawn to it, then you can't say blame it on God. God, it is your weakness that the devil is capitalizing on, and that's what you need to deal with if you must move to the next level. Remember, I'm not in a, in a circle in their Christian race because they fail the test of temptation. Some maybe two women, opposite sex, or some true money, they can handle money properly, some true anger, when they, your breakthrough is coming, you see, the devil comes and fights you, and your emotions stand up, and you, anger comes in, and you start doing things that will cause you not to be promoted. So that's what the devil does to prevent you from moving to the next level. So we see that there are different tests in the world, and we've seen other examples, because when Adam and he failed their tests, Adam was demoted. Eve was demoted because they failed that test. God, God has given them free will. He will not force you. He will only advise you, don't hit this. But if it's left for you, do not decide if you want it or not. So free will is one of the greatest gifts God has given to man. And that free will is for you to, you know, decide what you really want in life. So the scripture of God says, I put before you life and death, blessing and cause you, and advice you choose life. So God will not force you. There's evil in the world, yes, we know, there's good in the world, but it's left for you to choose what you want. Many people are being, you know, stead with fear, uh, pride, loss, and they, because of that, they choose the, the, the evil, they choose the negative part of life. But I encourage you, no matter, because the Bible says when you, are, you pass through temptation and trial, I can't do joy. For it's working for you for good. For The Bible says um, all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. So that's why we must understand your love will be tested. Faith can be tested. Your love will be tested before you enter the next level 
of glory in Christ Jesus. That one understand. So we see examples in scripture. We saw Abraham. God told him in Genesis chapter 22, verse 2, that if you take all his to a mountain that he will, that he will show him a place that he will sacrifice that son. The son in whom you love. That was Jesus. God told him. The son you love. So his test there was for his love. Probably before that was for his faith. Because God said, leave your father's house in Genesis 12 and go to where I'll show you. That was a test of faith. But this is a test of love that he was expressing here. And he said, that son which you love, go and sacrifice him. Even when God had promised him that that son was going to be his heir. <laughs> but God was telling him, this is the test I'm giving you. Go and kill your son. So you, you find, that was a test of love for uh, Abraham, and he passed it. And that the Bible says, well, indeed, God swore that he will, surely he will fulfill what he has said and he will bless him surely. So he got a promotion because he was able to pass that test. We saw Moses, Moses, was, you know, God told him to command the, the a, a, a rock so that he could, he should speak to the rock, right? he should bring it up for water. But he got there. He had already done one before. God told him to strike the rock. He did there. That was the test of his faith. But when it came to the thought of love, being, you know, he was angry because of the murmuring of the children of Israel. And the Bible so he spoke ill. And he, rather than speaking of the rock, he struck the rock. He had a result, but he failed the test. And because of that, he didn't enter the promised land. Now, the Bible says in Psalm chapter 1 of Five. I want us to read that. Verse 17 to 19, it reads, He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for his servant, whose feet they fought with filters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. So in other words, we know what happened to Joseph. He let, there was, his brother sold him to be a slave, and he was a slave in Potiphar's house. He was accused falsely by Potiphar's wife of trying to, you know, sleep with him forcefully. Then he was thrown into prison wrongly. But at the end of the day, throughout that trial, he did not sin. And at the end of the day, he was promoted to be the second greatest person in Egypt. He was the ruler of Egypt, in fact, we could say. So, he was tested. The Bible said the word of God tried him. He was tested and he passed and then he got promoted. So we go, you see through our scriptures over and over, different tests to different people. Even Jesus was tested. The Bible says in Matthew 4, I want us to read that verse 1, because it says Jesus was tested. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So Jesus was led up because Jesus was just anointed. Jesus was just, you know, and in full of the Holy Ghost, anointed, the Holy Spirit was upon him, went to the wilderness for the first day, for the night. You know, he should have been very holy and everything. But the Bible says Satan came to tempt him still. And he did not fail. God, if he had failed, he wouldn't have him to fulfill what he came to do yet. But thank God he didn't fail. Because the Bible says it was tested. It was just anointed and tested. So that's why when you, if people that, you know, you, you, some people that are probably have a little anointing on you, God gave you a little anointing. That anointing initially probably was, is a test. God will always test you. And when that test, that anointing, how you use it will determine how God will increase it. So some people go and, you know, start doing all kinds of things without, you know, <laughs> without God leading them. God, now I just, so he said, there will be people that will say, Lord, we cast out them on your name, we prophesy your name. But he said, you depart for me, you will out of iniquity. I never knew you. Because they got the anointing, but they, they got the blessing and they went on to do their own thing and forgot God. Maybe we, that's why some people, that, that's a failure already because some people, God gives you a little bit of money and you're already proud and you've forgotten God. You, you're not going to church, you're bigger than God and God cannot increase you more than that. You fail that test. You know that. Go back to God. Repent and go back to God if you're like that. And if you're a man of God, God give you anointing, you're already healing and doing your counting. You don't even let the Holy Spirit lead you. You are now your own boss. You're doing what you think you're doing. Uh, you know, all the miracles you want. The Holy Spirit is not what the end of your ministry. Then you are already filling the test. Go back. 
to God and let him lead you, let him direct you. And all this comes through fellowship with God. So Jesus was tested, then therefore anyone can be tested. So we must realize that the why I'm going here because your love will be tested. If you say you love God, you will be tested. Peter thought he loved God and you know he went and God told me, look at the devil trying to see your faith, not to test your faith. But I know you will fail it, but I'm praying for you that you will come out of it uh, stronger. Because sometimes you can fail, but that doesn't make you should make you know that shouldn't make you give up. Because the devil can lie to you that like, you failed. Why don't move on? Just go back. So maybe we fail and they go back from God because they feel they are failures. When you fail in, 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 as a Christian, try to seek the mercy of God so I can re- receive forgiveness and receive or obtain grace for a time to give you help in time of need. So you need God's grace. When you, f- you see you have failed in every area, you have a weakness. God, we all have weaknesses one way or the other. But Jesus said, uh, said uh, Paul, that his grace is sufficient for him. So what we need is grace. So if you fail, go to God, ask for more grace to be able to overcome that weakness, repent, then try to move forward. Don't move backward because if you move backward, the devil will get you. Because God will, is faithful and just forgive your sin if you are asked. So if you've, you know, you've made mistakes, ask for forgiveness, repent, and follow God. It's so important to understand this because many people have turned back because they failed. So Peter was like, God, if he failed, I went back to try to, you know, start fishing. Then God, Jesus came to him and said, yeah, look at it. If you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, do you love me, Peter? If you love me, feed my sheep. Because he was back to, he had felt was a failure. He went back to fishing. And God said, you look at, if you do love me, keep my commandment, do what I tell you. So if you love God, you will be tested uh, because the Bible says in first Corinthians, eight, uh, I think eight verse three, it says that anyone that loves God, the same is not for you. Because I remember one time I was, you know, very happy loving God and everything. God gave me a commandment. One, He said, love people. That was number one. Then second, He told me that you know, give as you give all I had at that time for a certain period to Him. So that was a test for to prove if I love them or not. So, many of you, God has telling you, do this. is testing. God is testing you to see that, you know, if you really love him, if you really believe in him in certain cases, that's what is, God is doing when he tells you to do something. But And when you do it, you enjoy a promotion, spiritual promotion, physical promotion, because spiritual promotion will also end up in physical promotion. That's it, because the spirit governs the physical. So, remember, remember this. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, I think we should read this, to verse 3 and 4. It says, For consider him that endureth such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin. So, in other words, you've not... Many of us have not resisted sin to the point that, you know, it, it caused us blood to come out of our life, we got injured or something. Yet, you are failing. You are a lying sin because sometimes we can, sin can be a way the devil is trying to cause you to stop you. But God allows it sometimes to ensure to see or prove what's in your heart if you can still have it or not. And when it comes, if we don't fight against it because uh, what um, the writer of Hebrews is saying here that you've not really resisted sin to a point where you won't shed any of your blood. So we need to resist sin because sin will always, it's a test that will cause you to be demoted. Because uh, the kind of thing I'm talking about is not the one you are going to look for, it's the one that comes to meet you. Because sometimes you're on your own, you see the test comes, sin comes, the thing try to try you. Then when you pass it, you see there's a promotion. Anytime you see a sudden temptation, know there is a test for a promotion. It might come from them, but know that there is a promotion coming. That's why the, the test is there. So be very, very careful. But now the Bible says in um, let's say Revelation chapter three, verse ten. It says, "Because thou art kept the word of my patience." 
I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So they talk about the end time. In the end time, a lot of trials and temptation that will come upon people that will cause them to depart from faith. And this is the time we are in. So that's why it's good to start making sure you get closer with God, have a good relationship with God, and you can have a life that is strong in the foundation of God's love. That is very important in this end time. So I encourage you, if you're not giving your life to Christ, you're not born again, because there's no greater love than to lay your life for Jesus Christ. I'm going to John chapter 50, verse 13. There's no greater love. So if you're not giving your life to Christ, that's a big step, the first step of giving, you know, making sure you are a, you know, you have God's love to be able to love him as, or you are accepting his love because he already died for you on the cross. So that would advise be born again, but you have greater chance of making heaven. And it's very easy. Romans then actually believe that Jesus died, rose again, and you confess that you will, you will be born again. So say this prayer, believe it, and God gives you that gift of eternal life. Too. 